welcome to Ask the Educator, a podcast brought to you by Healthmark Industries. Are you a sterile processing technician or manager? Maybe you work in infection prevention or biomedical engineering. Whether you're a frontline tech, endoscopy tech, OR nurse, or surgical services administrator, you undoubtedly have influence in medical device processing at your facility. In each episode, we speak with experts from the Healthmark Clinical Affairs team, industry leaders, or special guests from the trenches to answer your questions and bring you relevant industry information, equipping you for excellence in medical device processing. My name is Kevin Anderson, and I will be your host. Now let's get started. Hey, everyone. Kevin Anderson here with Healthmark Industries. Going to get into another podcast here. We're going to be talking about wet packs uh, in this episode. And for this one, I have Adam Okada with me. Adam, welcome back to the show, man. It's great to have you again. Excited to be here. Excited to be talking about wet packs. All right, wet packs. Yeah, so real important issue. I cannot believe we waited until episode 70 to address wet packs on this show. But uh, Adam, you've been in the industry for a long time now. What'd you say, like 15 some years, something like that? 15 plus. Yeah, almost 16. Yeah, yeah, me too. So have you had any issues with wet packs in your experience? You know, it's occurred uh, before. Yes. Um, I maybe have a lot of experience with it, depending <laughs> on uh, certain facilities and certain places I've seen. Uh, yes, I have quite a bit of experience with wet packs, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. My, myself included. It's kind of like asking if the sky is blue. We know if you've had any experience in the operating room or experience in SPD, you probably have experience with uh, wet packs. So, that being said, wet packs can be a very challenging and complex problem uh, to handle, and it's a serious problem. And so we don't want to take it lightly, but I just wanted to address kind of because we both have some experience with this. You've seen a lot of different makeshift fixes for this problem that probably weren't guided by evidence, probably weren't guided by uh, guidelines and standards and things like that. So I wanted to have you take a minute to kind of share the kinds of MacGyver fixes you've seen in the field, because we want to address that, yeah, people are trying to fix this, but sometimes they don't really know how to fix it. So let's start with that. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the, the main point is they know there's something wrong, right? The packs are coming out wet. But there's all these sort of weird fixes that people do to fix it. So I've seen towels being used in strange ways, like the, the towels sit on the, the tray, uh, the trays go on top, there's a towel sitting on top. I've actually seen trays, entire trays wrapped in towels and taped down so that the towel stays outside and like it completely covers the set. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, I just this because towels a wicking material, it makes sense that like, okay, well, I'll just go way overboard with towels. And that will fix the wet pack issue, which again, is not fixing the issue you're sort of masking the issue right if in my career i can stop facilities from doing this one specific thing i feel like i will have accomplished something all right let's hear it and that's that the wet packs when they occur something comes out wet in a, in a wrapped item and they see that it's wet they stick it back in the sterilizer and close the door Ugh. it's almost like if i don't if i didn't see it it didn't happen kind of a thing and the idea <laughs> is that they're trying to dry the wet pack yes. in the container. I, I understand the logic behind the action. Yes. But really what you've done is you've essentially opened the door, pulled the load out and exposed it to all of the contaminants in the air, which we know, look, with COVID, that's what we've learned, right? There's just contaminants everywhere in our air. So you've exposed the tray to contaminants in the air. There's still steam vapor inside of the tray. Yeah. That's the reason we don't touch it when it's hot because the steam vapor will actually pull in like the moisture from our skin. And so if you put it, expose it to the air, there's water on the set. You've now put it back into a damp, dark, moist chamber, humid chamber, which is where do microorganisms love to grow and breed, right? Yeah. In damp, moist conditions. Exactly. So now you've put it in the darkest, most humid <laughs> spot in the hospital and essentially just let it seep into the set where the steam vapor is going to pull all those things in. Yes. When it comes out, that water will be gone. It will be all inside of the tray contaminating the instruments. It's not a fix is what I really want to teach people with that is like sticking it back in the sterilizer is making the problem worse yes. and you're not solving the main problem, which is why is my pack wet when it came out of the sterilizer? Yeah, I think that was a really important point. I think, you know, the idea is to give it some extra dry time. In reality, you might be creating a very large incubator. So <laughs> let's stay away from that MacGyver solution. 
So one of the things that you brought up prior to uh, recording this podcast that I thought was interesting is that where you worked in the past, you had a checklist to fill out when a wet pack occurred. And I think it's a good idea to have that kind of checklist. Can you just explain how you were using that and what it was like using that? How did that help guide your practice a little bit? Right. And I mean, as a technician, I had filled one of these out. I mean, I was lucky. My what, my educator was Sharon Rojo from another health mark uh, <laughs> educator. And so um, I remember at my first facility as a technician, we had this weird form when Sharon got there, we had this weird form to fill out when there was a wet pack. And I had never seen it before. I just thought it was, uh, why am I doing this as an extra step? All these kinds of things. Sure. And it basically said, if a set was wet, what set was it? Where was the location of the set in the load? Was the set wrapped properly or was it wrapped too tightly or too loosely? Was it a rigid container? Was it a wrap? Where was it in the, you know, position wise and a picture of a sterilizer load. You had to mark where it was on the picture. And I remember these little things that I had to fill out. And then later on, when I became a manager and educa educator, I remembered that form. So when I started seeing wet packs, I was like, oh, that's what that form was for. We're investigating what is the cause of these wet packs. And it can be such a complex issue with why the wet packs are happening. It's never just one thing. I mean, we know kind of the basic things. You don't put a rigid container above a wrapped item because I've seen them do that. And it does cause a wet pack on the wrapped item underneath. But a lot of times these things are much more complex and require investigation. You have to look for commonalities where, you know, is it the same set that's occurring on? Is it the same location in the load? Is it the same sterilizer? And then you can kind of, you know, focus your investigation a little bit better once you have data and once you have that information. Yeah, you bring up a lot of good points there. I think sometimes it's a good idea to kind of, see, you know, see the tendencies and that the only way to do that is to have a checklist and have a way of documenting things. Is this happening to a particular tech? Maybe they're loading the sterilizer incorrectly, like you said, and maybe that's only happening with, with one of your techs. Maybe they didn't get the message or whatever, or one shift or something like that. You never know. But sometimes we have a little bit higher complex items that we're putting together. You know, sometimes they're the multi-layer vendor trays. Sometimes there are those double basin sets that we talk about. They're reusable double basin sets that nest in there. I know that was a huge problem in my experience when I was back scrubbing orthopedics and we were using reusable basins. That was something that every time you opened it, it was like you were saying a little prayer that, you know, hey, I hope this thing's going to be dry. This thing's going to be dry, right? Yep. Okay, good. We're, we're all set. But, you know, you brought up another point about troubleshooting. Sometimes it becomes more complex than a nesting double basin set or incorrectly loaded on the sterilizer. And so troubleshooting and having troubleshooting guides and having a documentation piece is a big component. It can get complex, especially, say, when the load was days ago and now it's out of mind and the OR discovered it and it was a tray that was sterilized three, four days ago. What kind of process have you been through when it comes to that bigger kind of troubleshooting kind of big experience have you had with that that you could share that really opened your eyes up to how big a troubleshooting a wet pack can be? Well, first of all, like if you like you were saying, if it happens in the OR and they've said that there's a set that's wet and you look back at your records and this set was sterilized, you know, six, seven days ago, you're not going to be able to go to the technician and say, where was this on the load? Right. Exactly. So you kind of have to put your like CSI investigator hat on <laughs> and you look at the tray that was wet. OK, what tray was it? OK, this is a pretty large tray. They would probably put it on the bottom or towards the back because the large, the smaller wrap sets that were also on that load probably would go in the middle shelf or the top. So you kind of have to investigate, okay, you know, using logic, where would this set be on the load? Uh, and you can't ever get it exactly right, but you can kind of narrow it down a little bit and just try to get as much data as you can on the wet pack. And then you compile all your data. So if you have what we had as sort of a wet pack report, and then it would all get input into an Excel sheet where it basically said, you know, where was it on the load? It would have the picture. And then if it was always the same spot, you kind of know, okay, there's something going on in that spot in the sterilizer where something has gone wrong. And I think that's that investigation step and things like that is one of the most important things. I think the other important thing about when you're looking at the wet pack issue is that you can really, you really have to kind of deep dive and investigate and figure out the underlying cause. And that's really, I think the biggest thing with wet packs, if you were having packs come out wet, 
you can do kind of the easy fixes like the towel thing and don't wrap them and tape them and all that weird stuff. But like you, you can have liners on your, on your shelves and things like that for wicking. But I think the biggest thing is there's a problem. Sure. It can't just be solved with dry time. It can't just be solved with these little fixes like liners. There's something going on inside your chamber that's causing a water quality issue. And that's what I sort of learned as the manager was like, deep diving into water quality, deep diving into all the different things that can go into that, you know, bringing in facilities, bringing in uh, the manufacturer and then pointing their finger at the other one saying it's their fault. It's not my fault. But again, there is a problem going on. If you're having wet packs, there is a problem. You need to investigate and figure out what that is. I agree. Like sometimes it is simple and somebody loaded something correctly or incorrectly and you can find the cause pretty readily. But other times, it's a little more complex than that. And you do have to pull in facilities experts. You do have to pull in maybe the OEM of your sterilizer and get these people talking. Who operates the boiler? Who controls the boiler quality? Who controls the sterilizer equipment? And whether it's been PM'd or whether it even has the proper filters and all of that in place, like there can be a lot of moving parts. So it can go from very simple in nature to fixing it. And it can go right on up to a pretty complex issue where you have to bring in multiple people and you have to be pretty certain that it isn't that simple thing first before you do that. Otherwise, it's going to be harder for you to have the credibility to solve the problem if if you haven't gone through those steps. And that's why I think the documentation part is so important that you pointed out you had this checklist didn't even know why you were doing it necessarily <laughs> thought it was extra work, but it's actually a great documentation piece that can help you show that you've done your due diligence. You're relatively certain now that none of these simple explanations are part of the problem. We're using our liners correctly. We're loading it correctly. We have proper training and competency of all of our staff. It's only happening maybe in this one sterilizer that might be a clue, you know, to, to what the issue is, or maybe it's happening to all of them. Either way, sometimes you got to bring in these extra folks. And I know that that's something that you've done in your past. What did you find out when you brought in, you know, the, the sterilizer company and facilities people? What did you find out when they came? Our multidisciplinary team, right? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, facilities, uh, maintenance, the boiler company, and our, our uh, manufacturer of the sterilizer. They all kind of got together. We had a lot of different meetings. Again, it was a lot of finger pointing. It was a lot of, well, SPD is probably doing something wrong. <laughs> no, it's got to be the manufacturer, the sterilizer, because my boiler works perfectly in every situation. So there was a lot of like, it's not me, it's them. It's everybody else's fault. And so as the manager, it was sort of my job to kind of like el eliminate as many things as I could. So yeah, exactly. Having that data was saying, look, it's not an issue. Here's the, the most common things. Uh, if you have a lot of dense metal that can cause sterilizer wet packs. But in this exact, you know, in these situations specifically, there was no dense metal, there was no nested basin sets, or there was no heavy orthopedic mallet sitting on top of, you know, a smaller, you know, sure. wrap tray or something weird. So there was no kind of issue that was sterile processing specific. So it has to be something water specific to it. And what we ended up doing was the boiler company allowed the sterilizer manufacturer to come out and look at it. And then once they did testing on the actual water quality in the chamber, they realized that our saturated steam was not hitting that 97% of saturated steam. And that's the correct amount of sort of water to saturated steam percentage that's going to give you the right amount of sterilization. You want that steam to go in and out of the sets and, and flow in freely, contact all surfaces inside, but you don't want it so wet in the chamber that it's leaving the water behind. And I think that was what we realized. We had too high a percentage of water in the chamber, too low a percentage of saturated steam. And again, this is all stuff that as a manager, I, I didn't really think about. I didn't have any idea what was going on inside of the chamber. And I had to learn all of this stuff. But once we investigated and found it, we realized there are things you can do to fix it. You know, there are steam traps and steam valves that can get the water out and have the pure steam going in, the saturated steam. So that was sort of the fix that we had for that problem where, you know, we were scratching our head for, I think, weeks, months on end trying to figure out that we having a specific issue. We're having a lot of wet packs. What is going on? And eventually it was the saturated steam issue. And so that's really, I think, the takeaway I do want to give people is that we really need to investigate the wet pack issue and then figure out what is the underlying cause of why the wet packs are happening 
and again, it's sometimes simple, it's sometimes very complex, but that's really the takeaway that people should have is you really do need to investigate and figure out why. Yeah. And I guess hopefully it is something simple that's under your span of control. Hopefully it is somebody just loaded something incorrectly because you know, you're going to be able to fix that really quick, but unfortunately it's not always like that. And you do, you do, you have to pull in your multidisciplinary team and, and they're going to help you solve the problem after they stop pointing the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. But I think it's important to have a policy and procedure in place to help you along along the way when it isn't so simple. And something I think that's really important to point out is that ANSI Amy ST79 has a nice guidance document in the back of it. I think it's Annex O, if I remember correctly. And it, it gives you a lot to look at because there are a lot of factors involved when it comes to wet packs. There's excellent guidance in there for you to help troubleshoot these uh, these problems. So, Adam, thanks for showing up and uh, sharing your experience, uh, whether it was the MacGyver solutions <laughs> or, <laughs> or the real life multidisciplinary team that actually really solved the problem with your steam quality. I really appreciate you sharing your experience. Well, thank you for having me, Kevin. Appreciate it. And uh, always, always fun to be on the podcast and talk to you about it. In this episode, Adam Okada and I talked about the problem of wet packs. Chances are, if you've worked in the OR or sterile processing space for any length of time, you've had experience with wet packs. We want to encourage you to find the root cause of this problem and resist the urge to MacGyver your way to a temporary or worse, improper solution. There are products that are designed to help prevent wet packs, which you're welcome to reach out to us at Healthmark for such products, but there are many other factors as well. A great resource is ANSI Amy ST79 Annex O. This is an informative document in the back of the guideline for steam sterilization. I recommend you check it out and let that be your guide next time you have to solve the wet pack problem. Before you all go, I want to let you know about how we're rapidly adding content to our YouTube page, the Healthmark Education Channel. You can catch the latest podcast there as well as our brand new sterile processing quick tips video series. So thanks for hanging out with us on this podcast and thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show and the new content on the YouTube channel. All opinions expressed on this show are those of the presenters. Before using any medical device, it is important to review the device manufacturer's instructions for use.